Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another one of my Future Fight Vanguard series. Um, so today is Sunday. Uh, I missed the Saturday video because I was really busy with... Uh, I ended up going to my locals really early, so... Because of that, I didn't record the Saturday video. So today I'm going to record the Saturday and Sunday video and get them out to you guys. So if you're worried about that, no worries. Um, but yeah, today we are going to be discussing our Victor GB8 deck. Um, a couple things as usual. Uh, this weekend, the next weekend, uh, will be videos from ARG Nationals because uh, I'm going to that. So, if you guys are going to that, make sure you say hi to me. Um, I'll also be, like, doing my videos in a little bit of a different way um, while I'm there. So, make sure you guys let me know if you would rather see, like, a live stream or, like, a compilation video or anything like that. Like, I'm kind of deciding the way that I want to go about recording my ex the experience there. Um, so, yeah, do let me know that. But that being said, let's get into it. So we're going to unflip all our G-Zone cards here. All right. So we run um, eight grade threes, as usual. Um, we run four of the new Victor, Hyper Battler Victor. And four of the old B Victor, Extreme Battler Victor. Um, so what Hyper Battler Victor does is it has two abilities. It has a Rush ability and a On Stride ability. So Rush, for those of you guys that don't know, is the Nova Grappler um, keyword mechanic. And Rush basically activates whenever a unit stands, it gains the ability that's on the Rush ability. Um, so since Nova Grappler is all about restanding over and over and over and over and over, um, you get all of these rush abilities per every time that you stand. So um, it's pretty good. So Hyper Battler Victor, uh, good on Vanguard and Rearguard Circle. Um, it's Generation Break 2 is rush um, Vanguard Circle or Rearguard Circle. When this unit stands due to an effect from one of your cards, all the units in your front row get plus 2,000 until the end of the turn. Uh, meaning when you continuously stand this over and over and over, every time you re-stand, um, your front row gets plus 2k until the end of the turn. So it's really good at um, pumping your columns, making a little difference, sometimes a big difference in numbers because it changes the guard stage. Um, and yeah, pretty good card overall. Uh, the second skill is on stride, choose one of your vanguards, and until the end of the turn it gets a skill. So this on stride skill just gives your vanguard whatever it is, the skill, your stride. Um, when you're, and then the skill is, that it gives is when this unit attacks a vanguard, you can soul blast one. And if you do, choose one of your rearguards with the rush ability and stand all of your rearguards in the same column as that unit. So you might not see that many rush units in this deck. However, um, we have Hyper Battler Victor. Um, Extreme Battler, Buttagill, or it's called Server Temper in English. I have no idea why they changed it that drastically in the name. Um, so those are the only two rush units we really have in the deck. But then we also play Malyaki, this green one. And we'll get into that later on um, in when I'm explaining the green ones. But this uh, unit just gives a rush ability to whatever is in front of it. So it makes all of these rush units, like everything that you can play in front of it, rush units. So there's no need to worry about like... Hyper Battler Victor not having targets or anything like that. Uh, so yeah. So as our backup grade 3, uh, which we usually never ride, uh, we have 4 Extreme Battler Victor. It has a Generation Break 2 ability and an on stride ability as well. Um, its Generation Break 2 ability is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield, and then you choose one of your rear guards, stand it, and that unit gets plus 5,000. Uh, sorry, not shield, plus 5,000 power. And then uh, this unit gets plus 5,000 power as well. So basically, when you're unable to stride, this card's great. Uh, when you're unable to stride, like, Hyper Battler, Hyper Battler Victor is, like, worse by definition. But when you're unable to stride, um, it's good to be on Extreme Battler Victor because you can just attack, then attack a Vanguard. Vanguard not only gets a boost, so if you're attacking with a 7k boost, it's 23, and then you restand a rearguard and it gets plus 5,000. 
Uh, and usually the rear guard that you were restanding is but a goal, so at that point it would get plus 10,000. Uh, so yeah, pretty good card. Then, um, it's on stride ability is when your G unit strides, you give your Vanguard a skill. And it, this is just like new victor, but it's counter blast one basically. Uh, there's a couple key differences. So, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can counter blast one. If you do choose a rear guard, stand it, and that unit gets plus 5,000 power. And to the and then into the end of the turn, this unit cannot be used. Um, so, um, the way that that works is, or the key differences between new victor and old victor is that one new victor costs a soul blast because counter blasts are very important to you in um victor and nova grappler in general so i rather use new victor just because the restand is a soul blast instead of a counter blast because you can run out of counter blast really quickly um so we have a soul blast with new victor a counter blast with old victor um then also old victor gives plus 5000 power and new victor just stands the entire column so if you don't have anything in that column new victor is better to use but if you have a column then old victor is better to use because it'll usually end up with a bigger power as anyways um next we have four extreme battler buttagill or extreme battler server temper um in english uh this card is basically sazanza if you guys remember that old card but it has an additional ability which is kind of broken um so this card's very very good it has two abilities one's a rush ability and one's a generation break one ability so uh its first ability is rush generation break two which your generation break two the first time that you attack with your vanguard in this deck so it's not a big deal um so yeah rush generation break two when this unit stands due to an effect from one of your cards, if you have a Vanguard with Victor in its name, which you should always have, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So every time it would restand uh, with, say, a skill that restands and gives 5k, it actually gets 10k, um, which can create really big numbers when it's restanding over and over and over and over and over. Um, also, when your drive check reveals a grade 3 card, you get to choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row with power less than or equal to it and retire it. So it gives you a little um, control as well, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, and it also doesn't like, it doesn't punish you for checking grade threes, basically. Um, so it makes it a little better in that respect as well. Uh, then we have four white Hank, or in English, cool Hank. Uh, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it's boosted, you can counter boss one and choose one of your other rear guards and stand it and give it 5,000 power. So basically this unit has to be boosted, but if you have like Buttigall out on the field on one side and Cool Hank on the other side, you can attack with Buttigall, then attack with Cool Hank, use the skill counter boss one and to restand Buttigall and Buttigall will get plus 10K, 5K from itself and 5K from Cool Hank. Um, then we have four extreme battler uh, Arborail. So what Arborail does is you can counter blast one and soul blast one when it's placed on Vanguard Circle if you have a Victor Vanguard. Um, and if you do, this unit gets plus 2,000 power, and then it has the same skill basically as Cool Hank, except it doesn't have to be boosted. So you can, um, instead of Cool Hank requiring you to play Buttigall, uh, Cool Hank, and then a booster, you can just play Buttigall and Arborail if you're against like a dis destruction deck and you want to save your resources or whatever. Um, so yeah, pretty good card. As usual, you would attack with this, then attack with Arborail, uh, then restand this and it gets plus 10k, and then attack for 19, and then attack with your Vanguard, which usually will restand both. Uh, then we have four Arashid. This is the Stride Fodder, pretty basic. Um, four Unflip PGs, Lady Cyclone. It's one of the better looking Unflip PGs, in my opinion, as well. Um, also... Counterboss are really important in Nova Grappler, so that's why we run the unflip PGs. Um, then we have four Malyaki. This card is probably the MVP card of the deck. This card is so busted, in my opinion. Um, so when you have, it has one skill. Uh, if you have a Vanguard with Victor in its name and your Generation Break 1, all your other units in the same column as this unit get a Rush ability. 
and that rush ability says that when this unit stands due to an effect from one of your cards it gives it an ability so every time that your unit in front of Malyaki restands it gains this ability again and it's not once per turn the ability that it gives it so it stacks so basically whenever um, the skill that it gives it is when this unit attacks a vanguard you can choose up to two of your units and they get plus 4,000 power so meaning if you set up a Malyaki in a spot and then a card in front of that when you attack the first time boosted by Malyaki, nothing will happen. And then you restand the first time, you restand your rearguard, and then you'll get the rush ability from Malyaki. Then it attacks and gives 4k to 2 units. And then if you restand it again and attack, it gives 8k to 2 units. Um, and then they also have the 4k from before, since it's till end of turn. So very solid card, makes your columns really massive um, after a point. Then we have one Furious Puncher. Honestly, we only run Furious Puncher in this deck to um, have another target for Rush for um, Hyper v Battler Victor. And also because whenever it stands, it gives 5,000 power to another unit. So a lot of times you can just restand over and over and over and over and over and keep giving 5,000 power to like a rear guard. Like if you want to say Buttigal, like if Buttigal restands and um, Furious Puncher restands at the same time, Usually, um, by whatever effect you're standing Buttigal with, it'll give it 5k. So you'll be giving Buttigal 5k from its own ability, 5k from the ability that stood it, and 5k from Furious Puncher, making it 24 automatically. Um, so pretty good. Then we run um, one Extreme Battler Rune Ball. Now, I know that I'm going to get a little hate for this, but like I really like Rune Ball because... Um, I like ensuring that my opponent's going to take the Vanguard hit at least for the first couple of turns because it's very important to set up to kill them later on. Um, you could run Cabutron if you want to. Um, I just personally don't like that card because it, number one, encourage, encourages my opponent to go after my board. Like they'll make really extenu like extenuating plays to get rid of my board, which in Nova Grappler you don't want anyways. So it makes it seem like this unit's harmless. And then we also have a restanding Vanguard in here. So if you put it behind Vanguard uh, or Rearguard Circle, like restanding with the same column is like still good. Uh, if anything, it can become a consistent booster for Cool Hank to restand over and over and over. Um, for our triggers, we run four of the Victor crit. Um, it's when the Vanguard attacks, if you have Victor in its name, put it into Soul, draw a card, choose one of your Vanguards, and it gets plus 5,000 power until the end of that battle. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, we only run four crit, and then we run eight draw. We run the Gong, because he looks like a mechanical spider, and that's so cool. And then we run uh, four three minutes, because we run the Champ in this deck. So how could we run the champ and not run three minutes? Like, come on, it's John Cena in this deck. Um, but then we run four Extreme Battler Gan Seal. That's our new heal trigger from the Fighters Collection. And what that does is when this card is discarded from our hand uh, to call Gandred, which is the new Fighters Collection G guard, if the number of cards in your damage zone is one or less, um, then you can Soul Blast one and Counter Charge one. So it helps you if you've uh, used a lot of your resources and you're trying to replenish. The new G-Guard is also really good for that as well. Moving on to the G-Zone, uh, we have four Meteor Kaiser Victor. So what Meteor Kaiser Victor does is it has an act skill. Um, so during the main phase, you flip a copy of itself face up in the G-Zone. And until the end of the turn, this unit gains two abilities. Um, the first ability is when this unit's attack hits a Vanguard. Choose one of your rear guards, stand it, and it gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. And the second ability is a Generation Break 3 ability. This is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose one of your rear guards, stand in, and it gets plus 5,000. So it's better to use it GB3 because you're automatically restanding a card as soon as you attack. But um, you can use it as a solid uh, first stride too. Like it's not that awful. Usually though our first stride in this deck is Bustard. Um, one to set up for a future Bustard or two to... Um, to restand a rear guard on our first turn and have an actual effect without having to hit our opponent. So, so what Meteor Kaiser Buster does is you counter boss one um, and choose a card from your G zone and turn it face up. So we're usually flipping Bustard with its skill. You can either flip like Bustard um, or Sabreeze or Favorite Champ if you don't think you're gonna go into it that game and stuff like that. 
So you can counter boss one, uh, choose a card from your G zone, turn it face up. When this unit attacks, uh, that's when you pay the cost, and then you choose the same number of rear guards as the number of bustards in your G zone uh, face up, and you stand them. And then if two or more units were stood, and you have five rear guards until the end of the battle, it gets a restand ability. So uh, what you can do with this deck is against stuff like I don't know stuff like uh, Kagero um, or Link Joker. Unless they have a G Guardian, you can, like, if you're forced to use this card, uh, and it's, like, later on in the game, you can attack the rear guards with your front rows, and then you can attack with Bustard and restand them, and then Bustard keeps its restand ability um, throughout the rest of the turn. So even if your units go bye-bye, like, um, you can still restand your Vanguard, which is really cool. Then uh, we have Mr. Let It Rip himself, our... Beyblade Dragon King Fist Drigger. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, guys. But it, it is named Drigger, like from Beyblade. So that's what it reminds me of. Uh, so it's Fang Dragon King Fist Drigger. So uh, it's our Generation Break 8. Um, and its skill is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can counter boss one, stand all of your rear guards, and until the end of the turn, they get an ability that says whenever they become rested, you stand it automatically. And then for each of your rear guards, Drigger gets plus 5,000 power. So pretty cool. Um, yeah. So uh, this card's actually really broken if you manage to get to it. Like your opponent almost never survives unless they're like Kagura or something like that. Um, so then we have one favorite champ, Victor, because he's the champ. He only needs to be run at one of. Uh, he's basically like your ender if you can't get to GB8, and then you just need to end your opponent, basically. But um, what favorite champ, Victor, does is at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you can counter blast two and discard a card from your hand. And if you do, you choose up to the same number of rear guards as the number of cards in your G zone face up and you stand them. And then if you stand three or more units, you get to choose three cards from your hand, discard them. And if you discard three cards, you counter charge one, stand this unit and it gets minus two drive. So the thing about your favorite champ Victor is you can keep restanding it over and over and over and over and over as long as you have enough cards in your hand to do so, which is uh, another reason why we run so many draw triggers because it just helps you set up um, and get all the pieces you need. But also if you happen to be going into favorite champ Victor, like it fuels that as well. So, um, we run once a breeze if our opponent tries to do shenanigans with us. And then we run um, two Gandred, two uni Unial, and uh, one Blue Prison for our G-Guardians. So what Gandred does is this is our new Fighter's Collection G-Guardian. Um, when you place it on the guard circle, you can flip a G-Guard. And then if you do, you choose one of your Vanguards and it gets a skill that says at the end of the battle that this unit was attacked if the attack did not hit counter charge one. So if you G-Guard with this at the beginning of your opponent's string of attacks, every single attack that they attack you with and you guard, you counter charge one. So that's why I was saying that it's an amazing counter charge engine because you can literally use all five of your counter blasts and then unflip all five if your opponent attacks you five times. So... And you guard it. But um, yeah, very, very good card. The only gripe that I have about this card is that since it's a flip G Guardian, I wish that it gained power. But uh, maybe Bushiroad had something in mind with that or they thought that it would be too broken or something like that. So uh, Then we have Meteor, Meteor Kaiser Uniel. Uh, so what Unio go does is when this card is placed on Guardian Circle, if you have no face-up cards in your damage zone, you get to counter charge 2, and then this unit gets 5,000 shield. And then it has another ability that says when it's placed on Guardian Circle, if you have no cards in your soul, soul charge 2, and then this unit gets plus 5,000 shield. So what this card encourages you to do is use all of your resources as much as you can, and your G-Guards will like almost promise to replenish for you. So it's wanting you to use all your counter blasts and all of your soul. So um, a lot of times when we go into Uniel, the only part that we get off of it is the soul because we're on Hyper Battler Victor and it's pretty easy to empty out your soul between um, Hyper Battler Victor and Arborel. So a lot of times we have zero soul anyways, so that's really good. Um, but the Counter Blasts, we're mostly never at like five flipped Counter Blasts. Um, or sorry, you don't have to be at five flipped Counter Blasts, but we're mostly never at a point where all of our Counter Blasts are flipped face down, so... Um, yeah, 
So then we run one right, Righteous Superhuman Blue Prison. Uh, when this card's placed on Guard Circle, if the number of cards in our damage zone is more than or equal to our opponent's cards in damage zone, then this unit gets plus 5,000 shield. Basically, it just encourages you to take more attacks, and if you're at equal damage or more than your opponent, you get to be a 31k guard instead of a 26k guard. So, very solid card. Um, doesn't compare to the other G Guardians by far, uh, because they're way better for Nova Grapplers. But, um, yeah, still a very solid card. So we are opening up our card fight area to get right into the matches. And then we're gonna load our Victor GB81. All right, so first it looks like we're playing against Gurgwit, which is cool. I like Gurgwit um, as a deck, like it's not bad at all. Um, so we're attacking him, we hit a draw trigger. Uh, also, I think this is the game where we got really lucky. So then he attacks us, we hit a draw trigger, and then we ride to grade two, and we attack him, get a PG. And then he rides to grade two and attacks us, and gets a stand trigger, and we get another draw trigger. <laughs> so this is the thing about running eight draw, like usually it'll just seem like you're getting really lucky, but uh, you run eight draw, so. I guess, you know, and like as you're drawing cards, you're going through cards. So if you don't draw a draw trigger, most likely you're going to check another draw. Tr so he no passes our Vanguard attack and then he goes into Scourge Point. Um, he's using Gurgwit's skill to look at the top four for counter boss one and call one. And then he gets plus 5,000 power because of um, Scourge Point and plus 2,000 from Gurgwit. Then he uses Fam Gold to call Burugol which gets 5k and 5k from Scourge Point. And then he uses his starter to call a Jeffrey, which gets uh, 3k and then, or sorry, he gets 2k and then five of five. So he attacks us for 15 and then he attacks us for 41. We no guard the 41 attack. He checks a grade three, a grade two and a grade one. So no triggers. And then we damage check a Malyaki, which makes us really sad. But then we damage check a draw trigger and draw a Malyaki. So blessed. <laughs> So um, we discard that Victor to stride. We go into Bustard as our first stride. And then we play um, Hyper Battler Victor. So something I forgot to mention when I was going over the cards is uh, Hyper Battler Victor is a great rear guard, rear guard alternative to, um, to Buttigal if you don't have it. Because it's the only other thing that has a rush ability. So um, we're attacking with Arborel. We restand Victor. Front row gets plus 2k. Uh, so this was actually supposed to be 22, which I miscalculated for, but, oh, sorry. Actually, it wasn't supposed to be, gener uh, it wasn't supposed to be, uh, 22 because it's a Generation Break 2 ability and we weren't yet at Generation Break 2. So we attack with, um, Bustard and we restand, um, both columns, w uh, between Bustard and our Onstride skill. And so we check two draw triggers which is awesome, gives us more card advantage. And then he takes one damage. Uh, our front row gets plus two, and then we're attacking with Malyaki, so we're attacking for 30. And then he uh, G guards into Slay Me Flare and gets a Lagan from his top five and guards with it. And then we attack him for 47, and there's just no way that he's gonna guard that, so he takes it. And then he strides. So we're looking at our hand right now, and we only have one heal trigger, so we're definitely not going to try to like turbo GB8 him this turn because we don't have enough heal triggers to do so. So here he's going into Glorious Raining Dragon, and then he's playing uh, Jeffrey, so he's in Unite. Uh, he attacks our Vanguard for 13, and we respond with a draw trigger. And then he attacks our other column, we respond with Intercepting with Arbor Rail. And then he Jeffries puts in the soul, draws a card, and then he uses uh, Glorious Raining Dragon to counter boss one, flip a Glorious Raining Dragon in his G zone, and choose two of his rear guards, and um, put them into the bottom so that he can call three cards. And then he unflips one and counter charges one. Uh, so then we PG, and then he uses a uh, Paramore 
to counter boss one and look at the top three and get one and call it. And then uh, he put the rest on the bottom. So he checks a grade two, a Gurguit, and a Gurguit. So pretty unfortunate for him. Um, at this point, I just know that the game's like pretty much in our favor. Uh, but he l uses last rear guard attack surprisingly to attack my rear guard. Um, but I guess he thought that he was like doing himself justice by doing that, which is fine. But we did have a butt goal in our hand anyways. So uh, we just attack for 16 to his vanguard. He guards it. And then we attack for 16 to vanguard, restand butt goal, and it gets plus 10,000 power. Then um, both of our front rows get 4k from Malyaki, so we attack for 23, and he guards it with three cards. And then we attack with uh, our Victor, which is 31, and then we restand a card, um, and it gets plus 10k. So it should have got plus 5k more from uh, Buttigol's own ability, but I forgot that area doesn't automatically calculate for that. So we do check a heal trigger, and he does as well. Um, but we get to restand and give plus 5k. So then we attack him again. He checks another heal trigger. And then we attack him for 26. And he just guards with two cards. So because of him checking double heal, uh, we're able to take the game into a later state when he would have just died right there. So that's actually kind of good for us. Because it allows us to showcase our Beyblade. So um, he decides to play the last two cards from his hand which is when I knew he was pretty much dead, uh, as long as he doesn't double crit me, basically. But uh, he's using the Gurguit um, skill to counter boss one and soul blast two three times, and then his Vanguard gets 75,000 power, and every one of his rear guards get 15k. So, pretty good. Uh, he's definitely going for finishing us off this turn, so... So yeah, his Vanguard goes up to 101k, his rear guards are also pretty hefty. So uh, he attacks with his rear guard first for like 48, we take it. And then um, he attacks with Vanguard, we PG that just so that we don't get crit. Um, however, he checks no triggers, so uh, we are able to unflip one. And also not take damage. So uh, with this 52k attack, we could have just taken it and been fine. But we wanted to double G guard because we want to showcase the GB8. Because this is a GB8 deck, of course. So we use Gandred skill. Um, and then we throw down the 10k to guard the whole attack. And then we counter charge one. So we draw. And then we use uh, two cards to stride into Drigger so we can let it rip. So we attack for 16. Uh, he takes the damage. And then we attack with 16. And he just takes it. Um, and he left the game at this point. But I continued going just to show you guys what would have happened. Had he had like a billion cards in his hand. Um, so then we attack for 23. Uh, both get 4k. And then Drigger's skill. Counter boss 1 restands all of our cards. Um, so we're at 2 stack for Malyaki. Then Drigger gets 25,000. So we check three cards. Uh, we put this heal trigger to Cool Hank, but we should have put it to Buttigold because it's the one restanding the most with the most power. Um, so then we attack with Cool Hank. And then we attack with... Yeah, so I just stopped calculating right there because it would just be too many skills to keep track of, like Malyaki and Furious Puncher restanding, giving 5k and all that stuff. So... Basically, if you go into Drigger against your opponent, your opponent is beyond dead. Unless they somehow find a way to uh, to kill your rear guards, like while they're attacking. Which uh, is honestly funny, because I believe that Nova Grappler would be like 
one of the top three decks or one of the strongest decks in general in the format if they just gave Nova Grappler a G guard card that says uh, that your front row units get resist like a type of Gansalot for uh, for Nova Grapplers that would be pretty cool so then we have Victor GB82 uh, this game we're playing against Kagro, which is actually a perfect showcase because Kagro is our worst matchup. So we do ride and attack him. He no passes it. Uh, then he rides to grade two, attacks us. We guard with a 10k as well. And then he attacks us and we get a draw trigger and draw. So pretty good. We attack him for 14 to his vanguard. He no guards. We get a draw trigger and draw. Then he attacks us for 11. We take it. He gets a crit. Um, so then we take two damage, one is a heal trigger, so we do heal off a of damage, and then we take uh, his 19 attack. So we stride into Bustard, and we play a full board. Uh, we attack with Hyper Battler Victor. Uh, then, thank goodness for us, he doesn't have any G guards in his hand, so that's kind of what you have to do when you're playing like aggressive decks like this. You just have to hope that they don't have the cards that it takes to stop you. And then just attack them full force. So we check a draw trigger and draw. And uh, he doesn't check any triggers. So then he PGs one attack. And guards the other attack. And he's down to two cards in his hand from that. So uh, he strides into uh, the new stride Ziegenberg. Then he uses Ziegenberg. Or sorry, he uses Blade Master skill to counter boss one kill Cool Hank. And then he plays Shakur. Uh, Shakur counter boss one uh, to kill one of my cards, so he kills Malyaki. And then he does Gatling Claw Dragon to kill my starter. And then he does Ziegenberg skill to Soul Blast one and flip a Ziegenberg to kill a uh, Hyper Battler. So he basically just tried to like destroy my entire board. Um, which is why this is one of your worst matchups because. We don't have any recovery for that uh, beyond draw triggers, so. Um, so I was thinking because it kind of confused me uh, when he initially did that because uh, we were playing really fast. So I was like, oh, he just retired four and not three because I was originally calculating for three in my head. But he attacks with his rear guard. We guard with a draw trigger. Um, he attacks with his vanguard and checks a crit a grade one and a grade three and this is when i knew i could kill him because he didn't have any heal triggers in his hand to g guard me uh so then he attacks and draws a card which i didn't know what that unknown card was but i had to go for game right here anyways because if not he was just gonna kill me next turn with a uh, ziegenberg restand so right here we go into uh bustard and we play all five of our cards so that we can get the restand so we attack for 18, and he just takes it, knowing, uh, and he knows what's coming. So he just takes it and loses the game. And then we're pulling up area again for our third game and final game. It's been a while, actually, since like I've, able, I've been able to just play three games and have that be it for a future fight because people are always like leaving and stuff like that. AKA Leavers. So we have Victor GB83. We're playing against Night Rose, which is kind of another one of our bad matchups, uh, to be honest. But uh, we ride and then we attack. We didn't have a grade two, so we just got a grade two, so that's good. Uh, then he rushes us as normal Night Rose does. We check a trigger on our first attack, so we don't have to take any of that nonsense. Then we attack his Vanguard and crit him. Uh, he checks a Rough Seas Banshee and a Seawall for uh, his damage check. And then he's using Night Rose Skill to shove two into the soul and check two. And we take a draw trigger and draw. Uh, so we don't have any like really good rear guard abilities. So we went to stride with the other card, so we switch it out. Um, then we attack for 11. And then unfortunately he gets a trigger, so we're forced to attack his rear guards. Um... So we do Buster skill and Hyper Battler skill to stand both. And then we one gets a draw trigger. Uh, so we attack one side and then attack his Vanguard with one side. So he's down to four cards in his hand uh, and four damage. So he goes into uh, Obadiah because I guess 
Uh, he couldn't go into Gauche because his drop zone wasn't set up well enough, basically. So he basically decides to use Negro Lazy to kind of bust one, soul bust one, kill one of my cards and draw a card. Um, and then he attacks me for 16. And I take the 16k attack. And then he uh, goes into Rook and hollows it. And then uh, he attacks me for 16. So fortunately for him, he does heal and crit me. So simultaneously uh, doing work on me. So then he attacks me for 26 and I take it. Uh, so then we stride into um, Victor. And then we attack him for 18 right here. He takes it. Then we attack him for 18. Uh, he takes it. And then when we attack with Victor, um, we soul boss one and restand the Malyaki column. And then we restand uh, Hyper Battler and he gets plus 5,000. So uh, he three to passes us with Negro Lily. So we check a draw trigger, giving it to Hyper Battler Victor. And then we attack with um, the Malyaki column, giving 4k to both and then attacking with both. And then um, I tried to tell him that he, because he already used his Generation Break 2 ability with Negro Lily to bring back cards. So at the end of my turn, he tried to do Night Rose GB2 again, which he couldn't do because he already used it during that turn. So when I told him that he couldn't do it, he just quit the game. But yeah, I think it's like pretty easy to see from there. Um, I mean, he would have attacked me quite a few times. I can ass I can only assume uh, because he has three open counter blasts. Um, he would have like assuming that he wants to kill my board. He would have went into um, what is that card called? Uh, the card in Night Rose that clears your board. So he would have had to counter boss one to call a card, which he probably would have called um, King Serpent. And then uh, counter boss two and discard a card to call five hollow units and then destroy my entire board. Uh, but then he would have been down to one counter blast. So then he would have attacked um, our Negro Bone and the top card of our deck was a trigger. I did check after it was a draw trigger. So we would have drawn trigger, uh, got a draw trigger into a heal. And so uh, when he attacked our first one, we would have took it. Then he um, can't hit us with the Negro Lazy. Um, or he can't hit us whatever, with whatever would be here because it would be 11. Um, if he did try to hit us with a booster, we could guard with a 5k. And then he would attack with Vanguard, we would PG. And then he would attack with the last one and we would G guard. And then the next turn, we would just play our entire hand and go for um, Buster to restand, and, which would probably kill him. So, yeah, guys. But... That has been it for our Future Fight Vanguard series for Victor. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like the video for me. Thumbs up uh, the video helps a lot, uh, whether you realize it or not. It does tons of work uh, within YouTube's new system. Um, subscribe, of course. Share the video and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And uh, check out the description down below for all of our crazy social media things and all the things going on. Usually you can find it in the description. So we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Uh, for those of you supporting Patreon, thank you so much. That has been going very well. And yeah, uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in a little bit for the Deep Police GB8. Have a great one.